What's going on guys, Video Game Expert here, and today we're going to learn how to replace a dead or dying laser on a PlayStation 2 Slim console. I want to go ahead and test three different games to show you what a dying laser looks like. So let's start off with Rock Band, which has a clear back. As you can see, before the game even loads in, it goes to the browser menu. A good laser would load in before hitting that screen. Our video is now running at double speed, showing you that the dying laser will take longer to load a game. I am going to make sure that all of our games load to the main screen before trying the next. I'll now try loading another PlayStation 2 game, however this one is a blue back disc which uses a different part of the laser to read. And we can see that this game is not going to load in, so let's go ahead and click browser to see if the disc is recognized. Here we have the dreaded, the disc could not be read screen. There is no data. Lastly, I also like to test and see if a PlayStation 1 disc will read, so I'll go ahead and try that as well. Once again, the game does not load until it reaches the browser menu, and this time it takes even longer to load in. Two out of three is not bad, but if you're looking to play a particular blue label game, we're going to need to go ahead and replace that laser. As always, all tools used will be linked in the video's description. For this we're going to need a razor, a Phillips head bit, a small Phillips head bit, our screwdriver, our replacement laser, and for this repair we are going to be using a soldering iron. To get this repair started, we're going to go ahead and grab our console and flip it over, revealing the bottom. From here, we're going to need to take off six plastic casings that are covering Phillips head screws. There are one, two, three, four, our fifth is hidden behind the sticker, and six. To easily remove the plastic casings, I just used my X-Acto knife or razor and kind of wedge it in between and pry it up and then just pull the plastic piece straight out with my fingers. To avoid having to remove the sticker, I'll just use my razor and cut around this plastic piece. Now that I have all six Phillips screws revealed, I'll go ahead and put in my large Phillips bit and remove all the screws. Once we have all of those removed, we'll look at the back of the PlayStation, and right down the middle, we'll just pull apart, separating the top and bottom casing. Now we'll set the PlayStation back down, pull the lid up and towards ourselves, and it should come right off. Now we'll take a closer look at the laser, and here we're going to have three Phillips head screws we need to remove. These screws are smaller, so we're going to go ahead and pop in that smaller Phillips bit. Make sure to keep the screws and metal pieces that you take out together so you don't mix them up. I like to just pry that up and it should pop right off and I'll set that to the side with that screw. Now we have those three screws out, we can go ahead and start taking out that laser. So we'll just pull that down and to the right and release that metal rod. 
Go ahead and slide that metal rod straight down and it should come out of the plastic housing without a hassle. Now we'll take a look at the other side of the laser. And as you can see right here, where the ribbon cable connects, there's a small plastic tab. You'll just wanna pop that up. Be very gentle with it. It doesn't take much pressure at all. With that plastic piece detached, go ahead and grab the ribbon cable and pull the laser away from it and it should come right out. Here we have our replacement laser, and before we install it, we need to remove the anti-static solder blob that's connected. I'll show you exactly what I mean. This small blob of solder right here needs to be removed, so let's go ahead and heat our soldering iron up to 400 degrees Celsius. Once our soldering iron has reached the appropriate temperature, we're just going to go ahead and drag it right across that solder blob should be one quick motion and it should remove all that solder right off. As always, use extreme caution when handling the soldering iron. It is very hot and can damage the electronic component as well as your body. With that solder blob removed, we are now able to install the new laser. So let's just go ahead and work in reverse order. First, make sure that the plastic clamp is released. Let's go ahead and line the laser up the correct way. The hole where the metal rod should go should be to your right. Gently grab the ribbon cable and align it with the plastic clamp. Slide it in. It shouldn't take too much pressure. Once it feels snug, go ahead and clamp that plastic piece back down. With that ribbon cable securely attached, we'll flip that laser back upright, set it down, and grab that metal rod. From here, we'll slide that metal rod back into the plastic housing. It should slide right in without any trouble. We need to drop that metal rod all the way down and to the left, securing it underneath the metal teeth so we can get those brackets back in place. Once in place, make sure that the left side of the laser is resting on the metal guide rail, and then go ahead and push it up and down to make sure that it moves freely. If everything checks out, it is time to go ahead and put those metal brackets back in place and replace the two Phillips head screws. Before reinstalling the Phillips head screws, make sure that that metal rod is pulled all the way down towards you. Go ahead and move that laser up and down to make sure everything feels secure. If it does, we'll take that last metal piece, attach it to the laser and guide rail. Once in place, we can install our last small Phillips head screw. Before closing everything up, we want to move that laser and make sure that the guide rail moves along with it. With the new laser completely installed, we're going to reattach the top casing to the rest of the console. We want to make sure that each corner is lined up with our casing, and from there we'll attach it and then kind of drop it straight down and press down firmly. With the top shell in place, we're going to go ahead and flip the console back over and we'll reinstall three of those Phillips head screws. Don't forget to change out the small Phillips bit with the larger one. We're only putting in three of these Phillips head screws just to make sure that the closing mechanism on the console works. If there's not enough pressure holding the case together, it might not recognize that a disc is inserted. I like to give the buttons a quick press to make sure that everything feels right. And if it does, we're ready to test our games. When we test Rock Band this time around, you'll notice that the game goes directly into loading and does not go back to the browser menu. While we wait for this game to load in, go ahead and click that like button. If you have any ideas for future videos, make sure to comment them down below. Or if you have any tips and tricks of your own, Comment those down below as well because I'd love to hear from you. Make sure to subscribe to the channel as it helps it grow. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you'll never miss a new video.
If you guys can remember about five minutes ago, we tried this blue disc and it would not load. Let's see what happens this time around and it goes right into the game, which is the sign of a great laser. About 99 out of 100 times, if your PlayStation 2 will read blue discs, it will also read PlayStation 1 games. But let's load this one in just to make sure. Alright guys, as you can see, the new laser we installed is working fantastically. Every game loaded right away, None of them had to go back to the browser menu, which is a great sign of a strong laser. Alright, now that everything is working properly, let's go ahead and seal back up that console by putting in those last three Phillips head screws. Don't forget to throw on those plastic and rubber feet, and you are good to go. I really hope you enjoyed the video, or at least found it informational. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And as always, thanks for watching, guys.